Hello, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to show you how to identify a blood clot or thrombus in a peripheral extremity using ultrasound. This is an important skill to understand because there has been a significant rise in superficial venous thrombosis, that's SVT, or deep vein thrombosis, DVT, found in the in-hospital patient population. This is a very important skill to be able to understand and practice because if you're placing lines in patients who already have thrombose veins, whether they're superficial or deep, you're going to see almost immediate and acute complications caused by the poor venous return, which will typically manifest in line removal. So if you just place a line, your patient is difficult to access, they have very few veins left, and now you gotta remove the line because of a poor pre-insertion examination of the extremity, now we're just kind of complicating that whole patient's stay. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this lesson. The biggest thing you're gonna to have to understand is when you're looking at a vein, you're gonna to have to be applying downward force with your ultrasound probe to see does that vein compress? Is it an artery? Is it a clean vein that has no thrombus present in it? So that's kind of the simplest thing you can start doing and you don't even need anything fancy. You don't need color Doppler. Just apply downward force, just like you're seeing here to get that vein to smush. If the vein is found to be non-compressible, you're going to want to slow down your POCUS exam and focus in on that section. Right here we have the brachial vein and brachial artery. Veins on top, arteries on the bottom. That is your compressed view. You'll notice that the vein is not doing anything. And when you're in compressed view, when you're trying to smush that vein, downward pressure, and all you're seeing is no compliance. And in this particular uh, section of video, we can see that there's actually bifurcations adding to the brachial. We know that there's a problem, and this is something we're going to probably want to not only bring to attention of the uh, providers that are on, the MDs, but also you're going to want to hold off and placing a line in that arm until you get a formal Doppler. But let's take this lesson a step further and show how you can use your ultrasound to better understand what's actually going on. Maybe you're accidentally looking at a nerve, maybe there's just some weird presentation of the vasculature, and it's not a thrombus or anything you need to worry about. So if you don't have color Doppler, it's really going to come down to compressibility, looking at it, the, the picture longitudinally or horizontally to see, is it not compressing? And do you see a hyperechoic that is kind of like a more grayscale uh, collection inside the vein? If, if you do have color Doppler, this is where you're really going to be able to understand what's going on. So activate color Doppler. And then what I like to do is open the screen to the full size of the picture. That way you're not really missing anything when you're trying to assess flow. You're going to want to apply the probe and put your hand on the patient's wrist and apply a very gentle squeeze. Whenever I squeeze, that's when you see the little bit of blue pop into um, the picture here. That's me doing that. In blue or red, it doesn't matter. It's just showing that there is some flow. It's patent or it's not patent if you don't see any color. So here I will show you the veins that we're looking at earlier in using color Doppler. And you can see that brachial vein in compressed view. You'll see the basilic off to the right and the artery to the lower left. Um, Right away, we can already tell there's a problem. It's not compressible, and there is just no flow inside that vein. I will then activate pulse wave and see if I can kind of hear anything audibly and see any good waveforms, and I'll talk a little bit more about what this function does and how it can help you identify thrombus. And finally, I will orient the probe in linear view. We have the artery on the bottom, the brachial vein on the top, that is the DVT, that thrombose brachial vein, and we see there is no color flow in there. All right, so let's see how you've done so far. Is this a good looking vein, that basilic up to the right? Is it compressible and is it something you'd use? And the answer was yes. Now we'll move to color flow. We're not just trying to compress right now, we're just seeing is there good flow. And as I follow this vein around, I'm squeezing. Squeezing there, a little blue. As I continue to scan up the arm, do we think this is a vein we'd want to use? As we're moving just beyond the AC, squeezing. Moving up into the basilic area. And again, the answer is yes, this is a good vein. This is one I'd have no problem using. Now here's that pulse wave function. Notice how we have waveform and we can also audibly hear the vein pumping away. This is a great example of what uh, a good finding would be. This is what you want to see. And then right here would be a suspicious finding. Um, you can actually kind of hear the artery beating, but the vein itself is not making any waveform. Again, it's a brachial vein with a brachial DVT not really making any real waveform. So how about this picture? You've got the brachial veins around the artery and the basilic vein off to the right. Do we see any issues? Vein to the right is not doing anything. This is a full compressed view. Basilic vein is thrombosis. If you look carefully, you can see a little bit of collection in there. That's where you kind of get those echogenic hyperechoic signals that signify there's something going inside the vein, there's something wrong. 
likely is going to be some sort of uh, thrombus. So once you identify and feel like, yes, my patient is positive for a thrombus, is it superficial or is it deep? If it's superficial, there's not really a clinical treatment. We're not going to heparinize a patient with a superficial thrombosis unless it's in an inopportune area. Um, but if it's deep, of course, we need to let the provider know, hey, I found this. Can we get a formal Doppler? And then one more time, this is a slow motion compression of the upper arm basilic vein, but again, this could be any size vein where you're going to spot these things. Superficial, lower arm, deeper upper, doesn't matter. You're, going to, you're not going to want to be placing IVs into veins that have thrombus present, or at the very least, you want to place them above and hope that you got good flow to get back to the heart, because if you don't, you're going to start to see what happens in this next picture, and that's going to be catheter-associated thromboemboli. So in this picture, I'm looking at the longitudinal or linear view, and we are seeing a catheter with something in there. Do you see the thrombus? Do you see that hyperechoic structure that is around the catheter tip? And this complication can manifest in more than one way. This could either be you didn't examine your arm properly prior to insertion, the catheter occluded greater than 45%, which means you had a poor vein to catheter ratio, and in many cases, this was precipitated by IV medication, so we're looking at a thrombophlebitis picture, which caused the uh, blood clot to form. And the last thing I want to cover is when you're looking at anything in the arm with your ultrasound, you want to be scanning up further than your site of um, insertion. The problem is not just is there a blood clot, but does this what does this vein do after we go from the point I want to insert into and beyond? Does it flow up into a thrombus? Is it a nice patent path up to the axillary? Or do we have something in the way? Regardless of what's going on, you just want to be looking beyond the site of insertion because, again, if you place a bad line and a complication emerges, you're going to have to remove that line, and many patients just don't have a lot of veins left. And premature removal of a venous access device is just all around not good for the patient's plan of care and overall outcome.